So we're so feel free to make a small talk or something. Mm-hmm. I want to check on when I tweet about this. That shit is Twitch, the world. YouTube. Everything that's successful gets worse. <laughs> What's that? Everything that's successful gets worse. Basically, like, if you can say when private equity just, comes in, things go to shit. That's a better way to put it. Yeah. YouTube guys, used to be amazing. I guess. I guess. Now it sucks. This uh, Google purchase on YouTube doesn't make. Uh, it's private equity. Google's the yeah, out. It's clearly not private equity, I guess, yeah. right? It's public, which is the whole point. But I guess when things are purchased by other things, is when they end up sucking. Yeah. When, when things are bought out by a company that didn't that just show wants to make money, the labor yeah. of love yeah. that went into the initial project. AKA, look at what's happening to Blizzard now. Yeah. Yeah, they're oh. getting a lot of shit right now, dude. Blizzard they are trash. now worse than EA. Trash. Ooh. Ah. The, I'm at least EA did yeah. fall in order. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Polar Will, did you just say I know EA is here than Blizzard? I know, I feel dirty saying that, but I sort of just did. I don't know. Disgusting. Here's the thing, at least EA has put out like a good game in the past decade. <laughs> like the last Damn. game. They... Blizzard hasn't put Blizzard... out a good game in, in a long time. StarCraft so... 2 was like the last one, I would say. Oh, that... there, there were some more positive reviews for just... Battle for Azeroth, I think, right? People like no, that. No, 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 no. Is it the one before no. that? Battle for Azeroth. What's the one we jumped back uh, in for? Warlord, 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 Warlord of Draenor. Warlord of Draenor. Warlord of then Legion? Yeah. And Yeah, you're right. The only thing we didn't play was BFA, huh? Yeah. Okay, there you go. So I guess it wasn't that great. Uh, the music is good too. Come yeah. here. Well, to be good. fair, Hearthstone, I know people now are kind of taboo on it, but it, it started off really good. Right. So and then they decided, then once it became popular, they decided good. to good. phase the money into it. Time you know, here. it's like yeah. because they were making it's a good profit on it, and, but they there. weren't making there. as much profit as they could possibly make on it. Yeah. And that's when they started this. That's when they started the seasons, right? Where they were like, we're phasing out all the old stuff. So you have to rebuy your collection. Uh, that's where I dropped it. Yeah. yeah. Well, you have to rebuy your collection. Okay. No, no, no. Just no. That, in order to be competitive, you have to buy a bunch of all, all the new cards, oh, right? Yeah. And the old, well, that, and the old cards become no longer. The old cards, yeah, they, they, they rotate out. They rotate out. Yeah. Which Magic has done for you years, but Magic has yeah. created a successful system uh, on doing it because they created sure legacy it. events that, that allowed you to use all your old shit. And you can still play it well, right? Yeah, they're old yeah. cards. But, yeah. but Magic has tournaments based yeah. on their old legacy yeah. stuff. Yeah. It's, good. It's, 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 it's just as viable as the new stuff. Yeah. Should I turn that off one time? Yeah. See if just Dar's paint And the problem like, with Hearthstone so Wild out. is that it just doesn't balance because yeah. Yeah. every season yeah. they have yeah. to put out the giant, like, this card will just win you the game. So when you make a go into Wild, it's just like, oh, this person has 30 cards that will just win them the game. Yeah, it's it's. Look, there's, there's, look there's, there's no balance. It's, 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 it's actually a really interesting uh, like watching the Hearthstone and Magic Arena. Done. Yes, you're right. Because okay. Hearthstone started up here and Magic was here. Just Arena, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so now everybody's and they literally are going like, like, like this. Genius. And they're right here. Right right lit yeah. from all the And you can see Hearthstone just. Stephen, I don't know where more. Open glasses. I mean, I stop I mean, I can just like. I think if Magic has ever put out a. Uh, uh, these these portable. All right, guys. Yeah. A phone, a, a phone oh, or a phone. tablet yeah. version of MTG Arena. If I may, Hearthstone would just disappear. You're right. They would. I wanted to cap off the conversation by saying I care about what you're talking about, and they would win if they made that out pretty damn quickly. So let's do a little summary, okay? Yeah. Uh, it's been a month since we played because we had to cancel two weeks ago for. What was it? You got sick. Yeah. Yeah, that sucked. I got the. Uh, the crud. Not Corona. AIDS. <laughs> the. Well, it's, it's, the, other vi- the other virus that was really short lived. For like, you get it for like, you feel nauseated and gross, and you throw up for like a day. Cancer. Uh, it's food, food, food something poison. virus. Just rot rot rot. rot-, rot-, rot- no, no, norovirus. Norovirus. Thank you. There we go. Uh, well, rot- you know, you, you know for sure. That I know this. Sorry, but, sorry. But Based on my symptoms, I made that assumption. Gastroenteritis, where you were vomiting and shitting at the same time, and then it got better. That's pretty much that's what happened. Out of your eyeballs. Out of my eyeballs. Yeah. Um, so that's what happened. Yeah, and then you didn't. We didn't want to get on this. I vomited out of my ass and I shit out of my eyeballs. That's that's the show. That's See you later, guys. We're done for the day. <laughs> so we're gonna leave Darn you alone for a little bit. Um, so we check scat. we check Sam. <laughs> Welcome to Pathfinder Scat Edition. Uh, we just lost all our sponsors. <laughs> right there. Sorry. Um, my pleasure. Great oh, Shadow Legends, we're sorry. I know. Right? <laughs> Shadow That's the thing on Reddit right now. Yeah. This was brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Um, so, here's what, here's what happened last time. Long story short, you guys uh, 
We won't even go over everything now. We're just gonna go do the, the lead in basically. And the important part of the overarching, because you guys have done a few side quests, but we'll just talk about the main story. At this point, uh, you guys went to meet Fubu, who is a, uh, uh, a, well, you don't know exactly what he is, but he's a magic user that's on the run from the Hegemony uh, Koi stores. And, you know, you guys are too, essentially, because of your, your crew's, uh, everything you guys have done. You good? You can get my tablet. Oh, your tablet, okay. You got it? Okay, good job. Um, it's like plain operation. Nice. Okay, so, uh, Vashti, Will's character, Vashti's son and his, oh, there goes the camera phone. Well, yeah. why is it just great still? Did you, he made it better. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, thanks. Um, Vashti's son, uh, do, uh, son and his son's wife, daughter-in-law. Um, she, his, her daughter-in-law is politically, uh, connected and she found out about she's known as a sympathizer and she found out about this guy and then Vashti shared what you, you know the situation you guys were in mm -hmm. and they said she set up a meet. So you were gonna meet this guy at the Down City Graves, which is the, the graves um, in one of the areas of Temeza, the city right? Uh, you were walking through uh, our jet stayed back at the inn, uh, the goat's head inn, is that what you guys are saying? At the goat's head inn yes. to uh, to tend to uh, um, a transient that you guys picked up and helped and took to, took to the room. And then the rest of you headed off to meet Pool. Uh, you guys went there, I think it was nine, nine afternoon, about nine at night, you guys went there. There were a few people in the in the graveyard area because we did stress that the graveyard, because of worship of Ephrapha, the god of life and death, graveyards aren't spooky, scary places. They're, they're serene places to venerate the dead and honor their passage. Uh, so it's not like you're walking through and there's a guy over in the corner going like this and then someone playing an organ, it's pretty peaceful. Is there undead in this world? Uh, undead are a severe abomination to Ephrapha, the god of life and death. Uh, but there are, at times, uh, those who would animate people's dead bodies, and they are hunted with uh, relish by quaestors of the church. Okay. It's one of the most taboo things on the continent. Necromancy is Necromancy is one of the most yeah. taboo things on the continent. Yeah. Um, I, forgot, I like the word verboten. I, I haven't heard that Ross one in a while. Then go ahead. <laughs> um, I know the person who says that. Yeah, exactly. Right. So you. Um... Oh, and don't forget, almost everything that's verboten, because I'll use it real quick, is allowed with uh, licensure, and the church might turn an eye if you're doing it for a certain reason, things like that. So, but yeah, if someone generally, if a citizen sees an undead, it's running and screaming to the hills and getting. It's, getting and there's, a big, and there's a big response. Yeah, exactly. There's a jump on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, you guys were talking to Fobo, and uh, let me just really quickly summarize the conversation you had so far, and then we're going to get right into some nasty shit. So, um, he said, he's a six and a half foot tall uh, man with sharply angled features and heavy lidded eyes, almost handsome if he didn't look so severe. He has a dark five o'clock shadow, shorter length hair pulled back into a tail. He's right by Melter Bazai's statue, which you guys, he's a hero that you guys uh, met him by. And you guys talked a little. He tried to hide it, but the truth is, he's clearly desperate for allies uh, and you know someone who can help him and he help you. Is the impression you got? He did admit that he caused the explosion in the factory sector, and if asked, which he did, he said that he did it in self-defense against some unknown thugs that had been after him. He's done his absolute best to not kill any of the Holy Army while on the run, but he did have to dispose of those thugs that attacked him. And you, I think, responded positively to him saying he's trying not to kill people. You know, um, he. Uh, he invited you to join him on a train north out of the city in two days. He plans to ride it a couple hundred miles north and then evacuate, heading east to meet with a na man named Peta, who belongs to a group called the Post Pariahs, a group who allegedly help arcanists safely disappear. You knew the name Peta, someone from your past, and you disclosed that to the party. Yeah. You said that Peta was the Gabarees, uh, Gabarees who basically murdered all of an exploration party that you were on? Yeah. And took archaeology the archaeology expedition. And took the holy ancient relic that the that the expedition had just uncovered. Right? Yeah. Okay. So not a nice person. And this guy's saying he's gonna go meet with that person, but you know, and you actually told him. And he said, Oh, I hadn't heard of that. Well, this is my only chance to belong and, and to, to get away safely, but I'll keep an eye out. I assure you of that is kind of what he said, right? He believed you, but you gotta do what he's gotta do. Yeah. Um he said getting to the train is going to be a task itself. He's being sought and he has no doubt you guys 
would you guys and girls would uh, uh, would rather hydrate immediately as well, so they can't you can't just buy tickets onto a train. And he was going to just try to sneak on, but he's worried as to this success of that plan, so he wanted to bring you in and talk it out. He said there, at the end, he said, uh, "There's one other issue, and I think I trust you enough to ask for your aid." And just then, he looked up suddenly. Everyone made perception checks. They noticed that guards were approaching, along with maned wolves that are normally seen with groups of guards. They're tamed and used for for seeking people out and such, right? Just like police dogs, right? You guys made a stealth check in the shadows and amongst the trees to attempt to uh, go unseen, or you know, just kind of blend in. You did it for the group because of the cool investigator talent you have, right? Mm -hmm. You didn't. You rolled really lowly. You spent a hero point, rolled again, and you're about to know the outcome of that, right? Anybody have any questions or anything before we go? Okay. So and I, and I'm a little bit ways in the back. You're not there at all yet. Okay. Yes, but yes. <laughs> no worries. Spoiler. Spoiler. Um, Spoiler. So you're gonna roll again? Are you rolling a stealth check again? No, I was already there. Oh, okay. okay. They were not great though. So these guards approach. Um, uh, some. So some guards approach from across the way. Okay. Uh, three guards and a, and a main wolf and they walk right up to you. Because they spotted you, and one of them says, "Hey there, hold on." And it, it, is it, it just like I said? Is there a lot of people around, or is it? Is it this is? So I described, I described them as they came through the gravesite, the, uh, the graveyard. There were maybe a half dozen people they saw, um, you know, paying reverence to certain, uh, certain. Uh, mausoleums, um, and others just chatting. You know, like they maybe they had just finished visiting uh, someone's resting place and were talking. But it's very, like I said, it's a really chill atmosphere. Is it like what time? Of the day? Nine p.m. But it's normal to because, again because the dark is so tied with the idea of death in a graveyard and the scary, spooky stuff in the real world. It's not the same here. People visit family up until, you know, 10, 11 p.m. and then go home sometimes. So, so, you know, it's not abnormal for you guys to even be in a graveyard. Now, a group of your size speaking, you know, maybe, maybe. So he doesn't look aggressive. He's just said, hey, hold on there. <coughs> and he starts to walk over, salute. And he gets over to you. Hello there. This looks like a right party. How's, uh, what's going on? We are just gathered here to uh, commemorate the, the death of one of our friends several years ago. We meet here every year. Oh, that's, that's nice to hear. Go ahead and make a check. Deception. Is it deception? Or... I, normally I allow a little bit more combo to go on, but he's going to try to read that right away. Ooh, that is amazing. So that would be a 25. Okay, so he absolutely seems to believe. He says, Says, oh, that's nice to hear. You guys all had a, a mutual friend. All right. Well, we're uh, we're just keeping an eye out, um, making sure everyone can peacefully visit their relatives and loved ones. There's been report of, and that's where he looks. A report of someone we've been looking for in the area. And he turns to the other guy and whispers something. To him. The guy goes to reach out, pulls out a piece. Together, and who was just kind of standing there, you know, by you guys, right? Yeah, so, um, this man here that you guys are talking to is a criminal. I'm gonna need you to stay right there while we take you in. Don't do anything stupid. Are you sure? He's talking to him though when he says that. Okay. Are you sure that he's a criminal? I mean, he does not have the face of a criminal. Yeah, I mean, I guess not. And he turns the paper around, and it's an identical uh, charcoal <laughs> drawing of Fubo, like, very, very exactly him. He has longer hair in the in the, in the art. Mm -hmm. He's clearly cut it since then. But yeah, it's a, I mean, perhaps it is just mistaken identity. It's always possible, and that's why we have police stations, and uh, uh, we can take him down. And figure it out. out there. So he just starts to, you know, uh, the main wolf. One guy says something, whispers on a command of the main wolf, who just you know sits and is just like intent on the uh, on Fubo behind you guys. And the guy, one of the lead one that was talking, walks through. You guys kind of have to part in order to let him. Do you guys mm -hmm. part? Yep. I do. Is that the location of everybody? Or? Yeah, um, no, because this is this. There's a for those who are watching, they can't see. Yeah. There's a map that's here in case you guys turn this into something. Okay. Yeah, so this good. this is not the position of everybody yeah. just yet. No worries. Because um, you can very well yeah. any encounter cannot be a combat. Almost any encounter. Diplomatize their way. You're talking about wild animal that's hungry. It's probably a combat, but you know. Um, so so you guys part. Does anyone not part? No we'll part. Okay. And then he he moves through and you know. Who um, steps steps back away from the guy a second? And he goes, "You know, you're not taking me alive." And he goes, "Oh, is that is that the case? Well, let's let's do this then." 
and he uh, lunges forward. And the two guards behind that are by the main wolf draw their shock uh, cudgels. You guys have seen these. Um, actually, you guys haven't seen these used just yet. So it drops a sh draws a shock cudgel, presses a, they press a button, and <laughs> extends, and the ends start you know with some static electricity on the ends. And uh, he rushes forward, and we will steps back, and we will roll initiative for anybody who wants to roll initiative right now. That's the way I'm gonna. That's the way I'm gonna set that up, actually. Okay. If this ends up with me just playing with myself in front of you, then so be it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm here for, after all. After all. Oh, you do roll that dice really well. Then. It's what I do. City guard. I'm not getting involved. <laughs> I've known him for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a valid point. Alright. So you saw what I just rolled in a row? Did, did, he, did you guys just tell him though that you're like also wanted as well? He also knows you're wanted? Um, he knows that already. Fobo yeah, knows that already. Um, oh shit, so you got really high. <laughs> we, yeah, we gotta go. Snitches two days. It's probably too long. <laughs> And I can see this group is really <laughs> okay. fully lawful. All right, did anyone did anyone roll? Rolling initiative is not going to give off that you you're doing anything yet. Yeah. So if you don't want to roll it, like I think purposely you won't, you know. But if you want to roll it, that doesn't mean you have to take an action. So it's totally up to you guys. I, I, I only want you sorry really quickly. I only want you to roll it if your character is literally ambivalent about the issue. Bashi's not. So that's up for you guys to decide. Am I right? Bashi just stepped back. Bashi just clearly knows what she wants to do, which is nothing. So yeah. what, did, what did you get? Eleven. Eleven. Okay. Anybody else roll? Thirteen. Okay. That's it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Ross is just gonna stay out of it. Hoft. Uh, Rostam. Mm -hmm. Hoft Khan Rostam. When you tell people this is my name, how do you introduce yourself generally in character? Uh, generally, I'll like, say what do you expect people name. to call you? I'll say the full name. I'll say you just call me Rostam. Rostam. Okay. Good. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Let's not turn on the combat music or the map just yet. Let's see how this whole thing plays out. Okay. So, right off the bat. Uh, the guards got rolled a. I'll tell you right now, rolled a. I haven't rolled under a 16 today yet, so let's get that going. That's, <laughs> that's, that's good, right? Um, so the guards, uh, so let's, let's actually, yeah, we won't move it just yet. We won't do it just yet. So there's one one guard right in his face you grab for him, right? So we're going to go ahead and make a roll here. There's the there's roll under 10. Uh, so that is going to be, I believe, unsuccessful. Double check here. <laughs> Yay, grapple rolls! <laughs> They're actually uh, better in second edition. Maybe you know, Dar and I have shared what we like and don't like about second edition. I like a lot more than I dislike. Yeah, I think maybe you do too. Mm -hmm. More than you dislike. Although you, the things you do dislike, you're strong, strong very opinion. strong opinion. But um, but grapple has gotten a bit better. I really feel that way. And right, I'm gonna solve grapple. He fails to grab. He fails to grab. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, see, we the fool. Yeah, so he, he dodges oh. back right. And then two more guards move forward, and each of them with their with their uh, shot cudgels. Shot cudgels. Sorry, one of the guards. This is gonna be tough. Yeah, one of the guards. I want to give you guys some interesting choices to make. One of the guards says a command in in. Uh, it would be uh, Zymi is the language that they speak in Zyme, I believe. I need to confirm that. The the language of Zyme. I don't remember what we named it in a minute. If, if, if any of you have ever lived in Zyme or know a lot of languages, I'm just gonna give you what he says, so you guys can figure that out. Whatever that is, okay. And he says, uh, attack, is all he says, okay? And so then the two guards move forward. One of them takes two attacks with his, with his uh, shocks uh, cudgel, the other one takes one attack, okay? And they have reach. So they reach essentially over you guys. You guys have moved a little, but one of these, these attacks are getting very close to you, but they're clearly pinning, point, pinpointing at him, okay? First one, hit. Second one, that's actually a miss because of the huge penalty it takes to second fury attacks. But just... What did I roll the first time? 13? Mm -hmm. Are these guys providing any cover or anything? How does no. that work? No. no. Yeah. Um, only, so what I was going to say is only if they want. If they wanted to say it's like they were going to. Yeah. The idea of combat and soft cover being provided by other bodies is yeah. based on everyone in combat. Yeah. If you're not standing there and you're pulling back like you, like they kind of motion you to do, then yeah. there's no roll cover there. Okay. One attack hits, one misses, and the third one misses. It's just barely, I think. Let me double check. What's that attack roll? Nope. He gets hit twice. Okay. The shot goes. He's going down. So, let me let me see. He drops immediately. Um, that's an important thing, right, guys? Mm -hmm. Take a gander here. 
Shot cudgel. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna visit this more as we go. Dar expressed that maybe these are too powerful because I showed them to him a while ago, right? Mm -hmm. But we'll keep an eye on it. Yeah. Okay. So um, it's two handed. What? The tricky thing is we're level. Two. I know that's true. That's true. So, and sometimes weapons like this, special high tech weapons, are really good at lower levels. Here, not as good here's the thing. I, I thought it was too powerful when thinking of of it being available to PCs, but this is an item that a PC should have to try to get their hands on. It's going to be tough too, yeah, because they're regulated pretty sure, right. So it's a regulated weapon yeah. that the military has, and why shouldn't they have better weapons? All right, so he takes. Oops. Not the military. The guards. The guards. Yeah. Yeah. Like Parap that paramilitary. Idea. I like the idea of guards so he's, actually being well equipped. So he's not yeah. he's not very hurt, but and it runs out of charges. Same as if you're not fail. a guard, if, even if you've stolen a weapon, it'll run out of charges. Fucking and you can't recharge it. Fail again? Or say you don't have. I mean, you fail twice. I mean, if you're so the right class, you can recharge. We looked at it, um, and he went from so he's he went from so he got hit. I'll tell you guys the mechanics just so you can see physically how risks are represented. No, maybe I won't. He gets hit with the shock cudgel, and he like. Looks a little, uh, uh, the electricity seemed to stun him a little, right? Mm -hmm. And then he gets hit with another one and he almost falls to his knees. Okay. But he's still up. And it's his turn right now. Now it gets interesting. Uh, now, well, yeah, you can notice that. Remind me what stunned two does. We went over this. You, you lose, lose two, actions. two actions. You, do, you still get one action and it's yeah. over. Okay. So that's what happened to him. <laughs> so, but he, he does have one action, so he's going to go with. Do you have anything that he can do that's good with one action? How many actions does Magic Missile have? It is two, huh? That's no. Magic Missile is one. Or, well, this is so cool. Wow. Can I read this to you? Yeah, yeah. Magic Missiles, so we talked about the things we like and dislike about Pathfinder Second. Here's one of the amazing things we like. It's one or three. Sorry, one, two, or three. Um, it's just a- uh, One missile, two missiles? Yeah. That's awesome. However many actions you decide to spend on it in a given turn. And then it's one missile, two missile, or three missiles. That's so cool. I don't like it probably no, 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 no. I, I, I like it. I love it. But uh, probably does crack the damage. <laughs> that's that's what I'm wondering. So, in fact, I don't know why. I, why I, I need to click on that. I'm guessing it's better for like spell economy, though. If you can get a yep. three action charge off in a combat. But sometimes you have to move exactly what it was. Yeah. You know, which, which is which is poor damage, right? But yeah. So, but three d four plus three at second level, at first level, is pretty good. Isn't too bad. But yeah. you can't ever get more than that. No, I'm sure there are other ways to. Because there are a heightened plus two, you can shoot one additional missile with each action you spend. But that then makes it a third level. Spell. No, that's not how any meta magic works in oh, okay. Meta magic is pretty cool, actually. An example, just to give. I've not looked at it. Okay. So. An example, right at the top is if you use silent spell. It's just if you, if you have the feat silent spell, you use one action, and your spells can be cast silent for the round. Okay. So that means you can only cast two so that action means spells with, with a heightened magic missile. You it's can only plus two. But maybe heightened is different, we don't know exactly. Yeah. Not every meta magic costs an action, but anyway, he doesn't have heightened. Yeah, Feel free to, but he doesn't have heightened, so don't let it distract him from the combat. Okay, so here we go. He does two, two, two damage. So let's go ahead and move him back, though. Uh, well, we're not using it yeah. yet. So he moves back 10 feet. Um, sorry. Mm, one miss. Oh, he only didn't have any movement. He doesn't have any movement. He just, he just, you know what? Down the ground, he just you know what? Up. He, he doesn't do magic missile, he doesn't. He just runs? He just runs. He moves back 30 feet, or 25 feet. And he so he's like running away. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Does he run toward me? We're at, yeah, directly toward you. Okay. I'm serious. Yeah. Directly towards you. You're hiding behind a, a, a rock wall, or I should say a um, okay. rock, a stone yeah. column, right? And he's now like 10 feet from you. Okay. okay. All right. So it is the initiative for someone to roll is Hesworn. Are you going to do anything at this point? Nope. Okay. And because 11 for Rostam? What I was going to do no longer is applicable. Oh, I forgot about one thing that was important. I apologize before you guys even decide. Uh, the dog, the main wolf, runs directly at Fubo, and you have to either get out of the way or get tackled. I move. Okay, so you actually move out of the way. I'm just gonna let you do that as a free action, just to kind of like shrink back out of the way. And the dog attacks him too, so you might not be able to run at all, actually. <laughs> and the dog hits. The dog's dropping him. So he takes that much more. And yeah, he's on the ground instead. So then it comes to his turn. And, okay, he does magic missile, so we're doing a little bit of, the dog, so I, I forgot about the dog. on the ground? Yeah, tackled in place, the dog has a hold of his robes, okay. and he's just pulling, right, hurting him, and the guy, he's not exactly shouting, but he's grunting in pain, it's not a great feeling, and then he just goes, and shoots a magic missile right at the dog's face, and the dog like backs up a little bit, but he's still holding on to him, okay. so. Uh, now we get to ask for is there any difference in your action? Totally up to you. Well, now it's close. 
And I'm trying to think of whether Hesmar thinks it's worthwhile or not. And he looks like he's going to be captured at this point because he's got shot twice, nearly fell to his knees, and the dog has one. The what range? Right. What range am I at? So that's gross. So now then, since he didn't move towards you, you are thirty-five feet away. Okay. Would you like to roll an issue? I actually did. Oh, so what'd you get? Uh, nineteen. I rolled. I rolled a natural nineteen. So this is. So I, I, I would have been delaying to see what happened. Well, no. So so that happened. All of that happened, and then we get to nineteen. So. Okay. You get to go first. Sorry. Then I'm gonna, um, can I... Uh, yeah. Uh. Well, hold on. Him first. I'm, That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Yeah, just... Um, how? I'm gonna throw a smoke stick in front of the whole, in, into the whole group. Can't. Can't because. Because I was gonna do the exact same action. <laughs> you cannot throw a smoke stick. It, you have to drop it on your square. Okay. That's you interesting. Smoke you interesting. cannot throw a smoke stick. You have to uncap it, and it originates from one point of your square. I mean, I was I was looking into that earlier. That's what I was looking it at. It sounds logically frustrating, but there are many reasons why. I think because they're no longer on shatter, you're twisting two things together, and then yeah. the, the liquid coalesces. Yeah, I'm, I'm, kind, of, I'm, I'm kind of okay with it. But there are still no longer shatter that don't make they're unwieldy to throw, etc. So, uh, and so my action was going to be to move over to him and drop a smoke stick surreptitiously, uh, but I think he's going to be captured. It's not worth them spotting it if he has no ability to run away. Yeah, correct. Because the wolf has a hold of him. And he can't run away. There's yeah. no point in me dropping. It's a good thought process. That's, sorry, that's no, no. It's a good thought process. That's as far as thoughts. Well, what do you got? What do you got? Well, uh, now, I, yeah, that's not, no, I, and I wouldn't be utterly, and so we'll, we'll figure this out because I wouldn't be averse to if they don't already have maybe a more advanced version that can be thrown. I wouldn't be averse to someone making one because you can make formulae just by talking to your GM. Yeah, I want to make us one level higher version. Now that, yeah. that, that no, you can well, so the level higher is the greater smoke stick, mm -hmm. and instead of a five foot square, it's a twenty foot radius. So then that actually is it's probably huge. represented by you can you can put it anywhere in that area, and then it does the radius. I know it still centers off the U, but that's kind of the representation there, I guess. Yeah, then I'll, I'll just I'll just I mean if he's going down, it doesn't. I'll, I'll just I will delay and watch. I don't understand why I can't throw it. Just mechanical stuff. It's not based on logic. It's just based on because part of the game's design is off of logic, real life logic. Part of it is off of this is a game, and this is why this. I'm not saying they're right. I'm just saying that's probably, probably what they decided. What are you doing, sir? I'm delaying. You're gonna delay. Now we're at 13. The that's real probably because fog cloud. <laughs> game balance. Game balance stuff. That's they all. don't want to make fog cloud worthless because yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. What, yeah totally. What, what do you sense. What do you do? Has I'm I'm I, I has Passing. decided not to drop. Rost him at 11. You doing anything? Um. No, I'm just gonna wait. Okay. And. uh and he, he, yeah, so, you know, as it happens, the dog is shaking him, and he hits the thing, and he goes, guys, help! Uh, That's what he says. Uh, then we go up to, no one else feels like stepping well, in at any point. Okay. One thing. Yep. Seeing that things are being thought through, though, that means that, that it's, it's a good encounter. There's some complications. So no one else feels like doing anything yet, so the guards are going to go again. So here we go. So, They're just going to beat the shit out of him with some at this point. So. <laughs> so at, I, least, at least someone get out their cell phone and get a video, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. It's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea, are right? They? So we can, you know, post online later. Yeah. yeah. They're all yelling, stop resisting. One, two, three. Stop resisting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> stop resisting. <laughs> This is getting a little real. Yeah, it's a little bit too <laughs> <It's a> little... <laughs> Jeff's like acting it out with Steven. All right, six, well, <laughs> I mean, this is Sacramento. We've had a few of those instances. Yeah, so have. he made, uh, he's, so they, one, one hits him, takes, you know, just he's like whacking away with the thing. His third one, though, is a critical fumble. Because they're rolling a natural one. And it, for once, we were, we were talking about how when there are three attacks, it allows for more possibilities for fumbles and crits for that matter. That was a one, so no matter which roll that was, it would have been one, right? All right. So what we got there. We got a melee. What's it say? You are flat-footed until the end of your next turn. What's it called? Uh, creeping hesitation. Oh, okay, cool. So one guy feels bad that they're beating the shit out of this guy with these st with these uh, stun yeah. stun batons. Don't do it, man. He's not resisting. And he, and he just <laughs> hesitates, and then he when he goes for it, he hits himself in the foot. And, he's, ah! and that's that's yeah. what happens. There. All right. So the guy guy feels bad for what he's doing. Yeah, that was one. This is his first day on the job. Remember what was it? Remember the order? Oh, this is a three. 
So I think that's two critical fumbles in one round. Are you so oh, okay? I'm I was rolling high earlier. Let's double check here. The gods are saying something to you guys. You guys should do something. No. So that's not a critical fumble, not a critical fumble, but a miss, and a critical fumble. The third one. The third one. So that actually makes sense the third one is. What do you got there? Hand it over. Unless you succeed in a reflex saving throw, your target gains possession of your weapon. Oh, oh shit. I failed. So what's the DC? Doesn't say. Usually, 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 attack. Usually. Well, no, because these are fumbles, so it wouldn't be the exact thing that's going to be low. It's, I think it's their armor class, yeah. Okay. Let me double check. Is it a hard DC? Oh, no. It's a hard DC for the target creature or hazard level. That's, that's not hard. a cool thing they can do based on the new okay. layout of things they have in, in it makes you reference something else, another page, but I already have that. I already have those essentially memorized now. So he, he he does. So he so he does that. He misses, hits his hits his own foot. The next guy looks at him, and when he swings down, uh, oh, grabs the thing and takes it from his hands. Now things are going to get interesting. The the third one steps in and attacks over the dog, so he can only take two attacks. Oh my! What did twenty twenty? Yeah. yeah. Well, well. He grabbed it. I'm gonna get out of here! Oh, it made him roll. Just literally, just Heads, two okay. 20s right His head goes off. That's a one in 400, 400 chance. chance. Jesus Christ, okay. Do you have to confirm it? There's no confirmation. No, there's no confirmation. That's it. That's just two crits. So he's gonna be unconscious, if not dead. He's gonna be dead. Let's well, I don't know. It's just, just double damage. You say, I hope he's dead? I said, he can't write us out if he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's Jimmy talking, not yeah, Zayla. So that's a little bit scary. scary. Hey, the leafy, feel good druid. No, no, no. no. The, the most cool too. Here's the thing, right? You, you think leafy feel good okay. druid, right? Yeah. So but it's the most ruthless person, person, person in the world Legend. is a gardener. Okay. So you, yes, whichever one will be first will be the first one. You it. got a prune. Yep. You got a weed. You ready? <laughs> the first one is? Roundhouse. Make one additional attack against a foe adjacent to the original target using the same attack modifier as the original attack. It's actually not going to do anything because they're not going to take any attacks on you because you guys have been good and not done anything. Mm. Right? There's no adjacent opponent here. <laughs> He's the only mm. opponent. That's just a regular critical hit. Did it say normal or double damage or anything there? It just said additional attack. Okay, so it's going to be double, double damage, damage though, because it didn't say otherwise. Yeah. Okay, next one. Busted Shin. Until healed, the target is clumsy one and takes a minus 10 foot status penalty. Ooh. Speed. Clumsy one minus ten speed. Okay, okay. thank you. Well, he's not giving away now. And that's well, he's dead. And it's a lot of damage too. Is there, sir. Is there any other guards? Or is it just these three in the main wolf? Those three in the main wolf is all you see right now. Oh, that's all we see right now. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I didn't mean that to be a tricky answer. That's all that's there right now. Yeah. For all you know, there could be thirty around the corner or none. But realistically, you know that there are only a few patrols over the whole cemetery the whole night, right? So yeah. over the whole year. Damn. Oh, there's two ones though. So. Is that dead? He might not be. <laughs> Much of Jenny's chagrin. Uh, <laughs> a lot of damage. <laughs> down to stab some. <laughs> no, he's unconscious. So that's it. So this, and he just drops to the. He's like, ah, and he's just unconscious on the ground. After saying, "Guys, help!" The team, <laughs> he's like, unconscious on the ground. And are we done? Is they and they they go to. They're gonna move now to the, the dog. The guy calls off the dog. And they're gonna, and one of them just say, "Thank you very much for not uh, making that more complicated than it could have been." The guy that's talking to you. And this, and this was our contact to get out of the city. Yeah, yeah. So we're stuck in the city. Yep. He told us the plan beforehand. We know when the train's coming. But you don't have to go. Man, she a church and bold. I'm actually we don't have. I'm actually having contacts. I think my next character needs to be. <laughs> I'm actually kind of with Zila over here. So we don't yeah. we don't have his contacts to hook up with though. That's the problem. We don't, but we need out more than we need his contacts. Oh, yeah. well, they'll hold up. So hold up this conversation. Yeah. He's yeah. he's gonna um, it's it's all valid points. But so they just they they turn him over and uh, put manacles on him. Mm -hmm. One of them sling one of the bigger guards slings him over his shoulders because uh, he's uh, unconscious. And then uh, one of them says, "You did. May the light bless you." He, he hurt the dog, right? Uh, yes, he did. Uh, okay. I go, I'm a cleric of, uh... Afrafa. Afrafa. You're not um, gonna heal a freaking dog, are you? I sure am. Let me, uh, uh, allow me to heal the dog for your, uh, bravery. Yes. Uh, saving your city. And the dog looks kind of, you know, kind of hurt, but okay, he says, yes, very well. And he gives it a command to heal, and the dog just sits there and looks up at you. Oh, you're like poison or something. No, I, I you cast the drain energy. What do you do? I heal the dog. Okay, okay. So your your most minimal. It only took two points of damage. Your most minimal, minimal spell, and you can see that it's not very. It's good. my last heal spell. 
<laughs> okay. So he's so he's so the dog is healed, and the guy says, "Thank you." And the dog licks your hand, you know, and he says, "Thank you very much. What a great citizen. Have a great evening." And they head off. Well, and they head off. Well, I didn't plan for this at all for you to do nothing. <laughs> I have. I'm just kidding. I have. I have everything available uh, that you could have done. So there we go. That's okay. We need to get out of here. We can go ahead and close this. Oh, nice. He's he's gonna yeah, wrap you guys out yeah. in a heartbeat. Yep. Yeah. We need to or we need to get him out. It's not too much trouble to break him out. Wait, don't do it yet. Hey, cancel. Hey, don't do it yet. Okay. Especially if we can get in there before the uh, Koi stores get there. I really don't want to kill anyone. So you guys are just, you guys can be talking now because they've walked up, so you can talk to them. Yes, I don't, I don't want to murder any of the guards or anything. That's going to be a fight we can't win. There's I mean, no you're on the run. Eventually, eventually you're going to be murdering guys. It's just part of the uh, business. Uh, speak for yourself. Be yeah. Yeah. Do this what we do. Set the building on fire, all the guards go to the building to put it out, and then we go in and get the prisoner, and then we leave. No harm, no foul, nobody gets hurt. Fires are a great distraction. It's true. I'm oh, gonna, I'm gonna come forward now. Yeah. yeah. So he just walks out of the shadows. Okay. I was watching everything. I, I assume uh, that wasn't our contact? No, that was our contact. <laughs> Uh, and you're just in the distance watching as they all just part and he's gonna just beat the shit out of this guy and then save him and she heals the dog and then they just leave. Uh, did she just heal the guys who just beat our contact unconscious? No, it, it's fine. We'll set the fire. It'll all be fine. I think fire hurts many people. Nonsense. We'll light the woods on fire. Why are we not... Doesn't the city have firefighters? Are the guards going to actually the Guards will have to keep order. We could have sure people attacked three guards, Loot, or now we have to deal with the police steal. station. There's many different ways to, in fact, to deal Here's with what we can do. We light a fire, and then as we're going through, we break a few windows, so that way they think plundering is going on. Or we could have just attacked three guards. And free. I'm not a big fan of the idea of lighting a forest on fire. Could we light something else on fire? Sure, we could light a house on fire. The house that you have. You don't hey, have house, do you? You like let's attack three guards, or let's take on an army. Uh, can we just leave? I'm no. the Vashti. Actually, well, here's the the difficulty. Is He's going to turn us in. Unless if but we if save. we're not here, who cares? Unless if we save. Our names are already trashed the moment the other Quaestors show up. So. All this is doing is buying us time, but it's time we don't need. We have we have a few options. The the problem is we have nowhere to flee to. Whatever city you go to, you're going to have the same problem. Well, it's it's only getting worse without without friends, without people for us that, that can help us start new lives. His contacts are more important than he himself, but we have no way of getting those contacts without. Him. I think the easiest thing to do would be to break them out of prison, or perhaps if we well, can get there soon enough, do we, see we can them make in the it distance or something. If we get there, yeah. If well, we get there soon enough, enough we can uh, make it seem like they have the wrong guy. Could we talk to Tazaki and see if she has contacts? I mean, he, there's no way he's the only one with those contacts. Before someone responds to that question, but keep in mind that question she just asked about Tazaki. You ask, yes, you can just see them leaving your field of vision 120 feet away. Technically. Can, can we just run up and knock those guys unconscious and then get our guy with the contacts? One second. He knows your son, right? Yeah. He knows your son's wife. Your, your, your family's going down. Do you want your family to be attacked by the guards in order to find you? Uh, we don't know that he knows that much. She's his contact. She introduced us to him. I think it's safer to assume that he knows who your son and your family, at least her. I'm going to allow you guys to not know the answer to this question. I was going to tell you, but you don't know. All you know is that she she hooked up the, yeah. the meat. You don't know if she met him in the you don't know. So both of your assumptions... There's a lot of assumptions there. Both of your assumptions are equally assumptions, but I'm just saying yeah. so there you go. Yeah, so. and... It's your family. It's your family. I think it's safest if we just get away from them, to be honest. It's the safest if they don't, the guards don't have them. See, the guards are over there. I can wave at them and have them come back. You have one action left, as you've been saying this, to go and do something if you're going to. Otherwise, they're going to be well out of sight. Let, uh, let me do some digging around at the station. I will 
uh, I, I believe that it will not be too difficult to make it seem like they have their own man. Okay. You're familiar with Infiltrator, so no? I, I'm certain, but it seems like there's three of those guys and a dog right now. They're going around the corner right there. There's five of us. Did Six see, of us. Did you see those shock sticks in action? Yes. Six of us. Three of them. When we get to the police station, it's going to be a lot worse. I don't know. I'm, They're just, only, I'm just a simple alchemist. Patrols are only a whistle away. If we're to engage in combat and they need backup, they can call for it. Might, it might be a few minutes or something, but I agree with you. Now he's unconscious, that makes it a lot more difficult. And now that you've had this enough conversation, they're gone. Yeah. They're gone. Okay. If, okay. If we, uh, did everybody ignore her question, by the way? What's that? Oh, no, they talked about Tizaki. Okay, Mitch. Sorry, go ahead. Let's, let's go. Let's get out of here, then. Wait, I'll just have Misery, no? Oh, I left him. Uh, the homeless guy's eating him, probably. What? It's just laughing. No, you're a rat. You don't care. You don't eat anything, anyways. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> What to do with this present situation? Because if we leave, if we get out of the city, where do we go next? Yeah. We have no contacts to get inside uh, another city, and we have no way of infiltrating another city. You just want to just leave and then walk over and wander around in the wilds? That's what you want to do? We can just head to another city. And how do we get in? They have guards at all the entrances. Uh, we need to have contacts to get us inside the city. Well, assuming the, we're using this person's plan, we ride the train. And then what? And then, then what? Or when we jump off the train outside the city, then we can walk in the city. But we're now in a new city that doesn't know. Walking in a city is not that easy. Look, one does not simply walk. Her, her argument is that her argument is that basically, you, if you take the train far enough, you're ahead of the news. Essentially. Yeah. 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 And then how long will it be before they receive news of what we look like in our names? And we go and flee to another city. Well, and then they get the same. If we go, we flee to another we go city. far enough, we should be huge at this. Fine. He, well, we are, but... If we leave the continent, we'll be fine. He did mention, uh, while you guys were talking the group, like, the last yeah, session, right? that he, well, that this, this post pariahs group would be able to possibly give you guys uh, you falsified know. identification bracelets to, to basically start a new life. Kind of a, a whip pro type type setup, you know. Yeah. So there's that to think about too. I mean, we could always flee to the Southern Isles. I mean, there's freedom there. But make a everyone can make a knowledge. Uh, what is it? Is it local? What is it? Not knowledge anymore. It's just uh, recall Not knowledge is the action. But it's lore. 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 Yeah. Lore. Nineteen. This can be made untrained. So yeah. sixteen. Uh, Jeff, did I hear yours? No. Still yours. Will they hear yours? Eleven. Eleven. Fifteen. Oh wow, okay, so all of you, all of you, 11 being the lowest, right? <clears throat> all of you have heard of uh, the Cork Archipelago, which is a group of islands, uh, a large group of very sized islands to the south of the continent, just below it, separated by a, a, a moderately sized strait. You guys know what a strait is? I don't want to be condescending, but I just want to make sure everyone knows. We all know what a strait is? Okay, a strait with the, uh, with the islands underneath, and um, they are at current, uh, they shift between cold and hot war, if, you know what that, like between, with, with the hegemony. So at the moment the war's gotten kind of hot, uh, because hegemony has long tried to be expansionist to take over these islands. Um, and they're like, and so you, if you could get there, there is very different, obviously. Yeah, and if you could get there, you would be uh, well, free from hegemony, you know, hunting probably, like there. So yeah, that's, a, that's true. Well, yeah. it's, it's much colder there. This is near the equator, which is frozen on this planet, so it's much colder in the core card. Part and it's part. also uh, there's a lot of stuff. Pirate the wars, there's 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 pirate there are other wars. concerns. It's, to think it's very about. lawless yes. down there, yeah. Yeah. or beholden to no, varying laws. If you're talking about from Hess Wars uh, experience, it is absolutely right. Lawless. It's compared to the Jiminy, everything's lawless. Yeah. But you know, yeah. And we're headed in the opposite direction, right? Yes, we were headed north. Yeah, and that's south. And you won't find many alchemical labs. Yeah. Then that makes my skills even more valuable. Maybe that is that is true. It's true, you'll be fine. Probably, I'll, yeah, you'll probably be studied for experimentation. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> That's what it is. Recall yeah. knowledge society is actually the sub the subcategory. Society yeah. is its own 
Okay. So that might have modified your rolls a little bit. Who cares? Maybe be better. Yeah, yeah first two. Okay. The reality of information is like in the past, like let's say with the wild, wild west, like yes, there would be someone's face on a on a uh, bounty board. Bounty board, board. Yeah. But most towns don't have these bounty boards. I'll tell you. I'll tell you exactly. With, with the same knowledge checks you guys made, and you're right on the right path, I'll tell you exactly what your fears are here, okay? They have bounty boards literally on some towns, larger cities usually, maybe one in one in a smaller village, just like you would imagine, right? But then on top of that, the um, various guard and police stations in the cities and towns have telegraph machines. So they can you send can't, you can't out it's going to be a hard oh. but but a telegraph. Don't forget that a telegraphy only has very limited written, messages, written words, right? And not usually drawings. And this is exactly exactly. So they can describe someone, but that's not nearly as good. So if they're distributing physical but, um, and art, the, that takes that takes physical. And then the quasters have more advanced methods, unfortunately. Yeah, the quasters have even more advanced method, methods of communication that not all of you are even familiar with. Real quick but, question: Do printing presses exist? Oh yeah. Okay. Printing presses are a huge part of. One of the nations. Yep. We did a lot of we've done a lot of nation building, nation but yeah. Domination. Yes. Uh, so printing presses are present in all nations to some extent, but there's one that's really big on that. And so books, uh, knowledge of books, and the ability to read is rather commonplace. Uh, that, that's, that, that's interesting because 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 then that brings certain. Oh yeah, but certain issues. so it's weird because yeah, it's why weird. They, <laughs> so, so here's the answer to your question: All the printing presses and what they print is regulated very strictly by an always present hegemony representative. So, what is this you're trying to print? Mm, we're going to modify this sentence in this data. But, but the idea of a printing press is actually... The only books allowed... You, can, you cannot are, keep that not, keep knowledge from spreading. There's no yeah, doubt about it. I was going to say, but and, and a printing press is actually not super hard technology. Once right. you have an idea, right? Right, right, right. Especially right. just a pamphlet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why there's all these underground romance novels being printed. Well, it's for, that's right. you know, you're also not allowed to, <laughs> just, like, just like with all... Yeah. Your character being a technologist, just to be clear, owning a printing press is illegal oh. unless you have the license to do so. And then if you have the license to do so, they're also regulating what you're making. Does that mean there are possibly hundreds or even thousands of people with homemade printing presses? Of course there are. Yeah. But how long do they last? How, how wide is the distribution network? But yeah, knowledge, certainly with technology, information becomes more accessible. Right? So, yeah. so it's real. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah. That's true. So we're seeing like a, yeah. every now and again a legal pamphlet yeah. yep. floating around. And the hegemony is actually not, uh, don't, don't picture it as like, um, you know, writing of almost every type is distributed. They're just, they're really controlling about certain things, very specific things, that's all. It's not like, you know, free thought isn't allowed. That shit's all out there. But, but things that, even things that preach against the hegemony, if couched properly and done through the right channels, or preach against, let's just say, Elements of the hegemony are allowed to be printed. Yeah, nothing, nothing that would uh, what's the phrase spa, spur revolution is allowed, but that's up to individual interpretations. Interpretation, yeah. yeah. So. They're basically suppressing all other forms of propaganda. Is more of what it is. Yeah, yeah. And the hegemony itself doesn't put out any propaganda either. It just tries to keep people from being true revolutionaries. Mm -hmm. because, you know. and, and honestly, I'll, I'll cap it off with this: true revolutionary dogma. Is actually rather rare because hegemony, you know, we joke about Star Wars Empire, we talk about the Empire was right, and it's a stupid joke that a lot of people do online. But on many, many, many worlds in the Star Wars galaxy, the Empire has been amazing for those people there. That's kind of how the hegemony is here. A lot of people are like, what do you, why would, life is great, like, why would I even do, you know, they're not wandering around as criminals, so they don't care. There's a reason why the rebellion happened in, in the front, in the outer. Yeah, this is a beautiful place to live. We're not talking about, there's no fucking concentration camps or anything, camps or anything like that. So, yeah. All right, anyway. And the economy is doing well. Yeah, absolutely. I'm making money. Yep. I live a good life. The stock well, market's up. Me. The stock market is up. Actually. Doesn't it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, There's yeah. a stock market in the north. And you'll just wait to right. They deal in futures and stuff. Yeah. So There's some advanced stuff there. Okay. Anyway, you guys are now walking back to the Goat's Head Inn. Uh, it's because you haven't told me otherwise. And, yeah. and it's nighttime, and you're going to sleep. But if you don't mind, I'm going to make a brief stop at the police station, or and see what I can uncover. So you should. I'll come with. It. I still think we should get your dog and get the fuck out. <laughs> like, what, but how, like, like on a train? Well, there's no. So the trains come through. I'll tell you this too. The trains come through daily, once a day. A train comes through, uh -huh. but it's not always the right type of train. If it's a complete passenger train, it might be a mail train, different things like that. He told you that the reason he selected the day after tomorrow, 
right? Yes. Mm -hmm. As the time is because a train's coming through that is heavy mail and commercial, and he thinks that maybe you could be able to sneak on as a stowaway on one of the um, train cars and get away that way. You know, on a passenger train, it's a lot more difficult. Weirdly we're enough, IDs. weirdly enough, because they're checking ID bracelets and all that stuff. So, yep. And our bracelets currently identify us as people from our original town. So yeah. If you want to go over it really quickly, basically, your bracelet identifies you. Your bracelet identifies, and we're going to go over what that means. Whether it's a different color, different gems on the bracelet, things, or just even carvings, right? But yours basically says from Fewesh, the nation of Fewesh, and uh, basically a druid of Lighthouse. What? Uh, Pilko. I like House Bliss. Yeah, Lighthouse Bliss. It doesn't necessarily say you worship Pilko because that's up to between you and your god. Right. But Lighthouse Bliss. Um, yours says that you are a practitioner of the arts in from um, from Tezzer. Uh, yeah. Tezzer. But it also says, it also has a, a modifier that says basically what naturalist citizen. Essentially, you earn, your family earns citizenship by contributing to society because you're not a human. So they had to earn their way into citizenship. You have all the full rights of a full citizen, much to the chagrin of racists who don't like rat folk. Um, I'm just kidding. And then, and then yours, yours says that you have authority to modify and create uh, mechanical <coughs> elements, but it has like certain ticks. So you're only allowed to do certain things at your low level. Yeah. If you were to try to make a firearm right now, you'd probably get in trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know things like that. You don't have a bracelet at all, or do you just have a regular citizen bracelet? Yeah, I just have a citizen. Uh, and all that says is a citizen of hegemony, which on a goblin is already rare enough. Mm -hmm. And you guys don't know whether he stole that or whether it's his, because there's a lot going on here. You guys are criminals, so. Uh, and then you have full citizenship bracelet that just yeah. says that. Yeah, and then you have a bracelet that says you're, and we all know it's a lie, you stole it somewhere or bought it or something, but it's a bracelet that says you're a cleric of, um, of Ephrathah, the god of uh, dawn and dusk, the yeah. lighthouse, lighthouse dawn and dusk. I'll say this, actually, sorry, in character, some of you failed the check when she was talking about what she was. Some of you believe she's indeed a cleric of lighthouse dawn and dusk. Who yeah. is that? You? I think I do. I you, think everyone you? failed in five no, I thought he made it. Yeah, Darby. Okay. Okay. So Hassor is the only one that knows that bracelet is likely stolen or purchased. The rest of you haven't thought about that idea, essentially, right? Good? Great? Okay. So you guys head back. Uh, you you two are heading off to the police station to try to maybe talk to them, I guess? Yeah. And the rest of you are going back to the inn. We're she's still you. saying things like she's adamant, like maybe we should get this, you can get out of here. But at the very least, you'll have to wait no for them to come back for you to get out of here, unless you want to ditch them, which is okay, too. But Yeah, yeah like, but I mean, like, you don't have an idea of how. There was this train... Right, where we're supposed to meet this guy. We don't necessarily need the train to check out. <clears throat> yeah, so don't forget, I will give you this. When you came into town diving off of a balloon boat, it was because this city is close-ish to Tamesa. It's within 100 miles, right around there. It was close enough that you guys are rightly fearful that news could have arrived, quasars could have arrived, something like that by now. But leaving town would be difficult. Leaving a city isn't nearly as watched and regulated as going into a city, right? But there's worry that if you just walk right out of town, maybe you'd be spotted and caught. Um, oh yeah, you can you can close the map down now. I rolled a I rolled a flat check for you to see if another guard um, spotted, you. spotted you, but that didn't happen. So good job, you guys avoided the combat entirely. And those are going to be a very difficult combat. It's on like the higher end of moderate. Uh, okay. Okay. Back at the goat's head in. Um, Did the homeless guy eat the dog? Uh, no, the dog ate the homeless guy. Oh, okay. That's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, he Hekiel, Hekiel is his name. He is just sleeping soundly, snoring like a chainsaw, mm -hmm. which Kuros had to deal with in real life last night when we were in Napa, Wine County. Yes. And you were snoring? No, Marissa. Oh, Marissa. My, my stepsister. <laughs> my sister. She uh, she snores uh, quite loud? really, no, not quite loud. It is the loudest snore you've ever heard in your life. In person, maybe not you. I don't know if you. Yeah. Yeah. But um, oh no, you you wouldn't listen to people snores. You're not dealing with that sort of thing. Yeah. So it was pretty bad. Uh, if he looks tired, it's because he is. <laughs> <laughs> but we also drank a lot of wine mm -hmm. and, uh, and, whiskey. and and whiskey and people had some uh, some gummies. We can say that because it's California and that's that's legal. So. Uh, it sucks to be all of you who are in California. What is it? What is it? We legal in eleven states now. Oh, that sound right? Let me take it out. He's like, I don't give a shit. I'm in California. <laughs> no, <laughs> um, so uh, he's snoring away. Uh, his flea bitten dog is laying uh, on the bed with him at his feet. And uh, don't tell me. 
Reno. Yes. I got it actually before I saw it, I promise. But thank you, though. Reno uh, is curled up at the guy's side. So they're all just curled up on the bed, sleeping center. So he has a dog, and there's also Reno. Yeah, Reno out there sleeping. And uh, the place has been undisturbed. You still have that 25 gold wafer amongst your belongings right now. We, we, we didn't, you weren't here the last session, but we didn't have you go, hey, here's this. You still have it. So. And, and, and remind me of the story of this black guy again. You, you, you found the poor guy just in an alleyway, and you saw, you both spotted, uh, uh, the wafer just sticking out of the pocket, right. and that wafer is true. It's twenty-five gold is a, more than it's like middle class already. Like right away, bam! Like that's a whole. What do we say? What's what's su- what's sustenance? Uh, subsistence for one day in a city? It's like one gold a day. It's, like a, mo- it's a month's supply of food. It's like a, it's like a, a annual. It's like a month's supply of li- no. living. Living. No, it's even less than that. I mean, it's even more than that. It's yeah. like four to five months' supply of living, based on the math we did. A lot of fucking money. So, and he's, he's a homeless guy. He's just sitting there with his dog. So we, have, we haven't even woke him up to ask him where he were. Yeah, you don't even from. know why he would have it and why he wouldn't yeah. have gotten rid of it by then, etc. And it was just visible, right? Yeah. So you guys helped him, took him and his dog, that's and then you right. took you no, took that for its own protection. Yeah, that's right. Gold, yeah. I remember that. Well, you um, gotta, you know, someone's gonna steal it from him, right? So you guys are back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are back at the end. I have some ideas to work with you guys on going to the police station. So we're gonna on the break in between sessions. I'll talk to you about that. Okay. We won't roleplay that out because I have some ideas and I want then once whatever happens, you guys to decide to disseminate to them as much info as you decide to disseminate. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. All right. So we're gonna get to the next. Well, let me think about this. So we go home and sleep. Yeah, sleep in the next morning. All right, let me see how I want to do this. Let's do this on the fly. Okay, we're gonna get to the next morning. You guys go to sleep. Uh, what are the rooms again? Just to, for refreshment. You have your own room. You're in a suite with you, Vashti, and Rafe. And Rafe. Yeah. Okay. And then you guys had a suite together. Right. Okay. Because there were two suites and then the side room. Okay. Um, when you guys. Uh, when you guys come in, Big Bontu is downstairs, and he does say, "Just hey, how are you guys doing? Wait, where's my Gavari's brother?" Oh, he's had to take a quick deep, or he'll be back soon. All right, and he'll go have a good night. And you see him turn and like dolefully take two uh, decanters of wine and just like oh, put them down under the other uh, ship, and then just go, and then just like walk back to the other. <laughs> <laughs> so he's and he's like a big, like <clears throat> nine and a half foot. Huge, burly, big old beer gut, bald gamerys. He's the big. He's just like, all right, <laughs> like walks off. <laughs> um, so the next morning happens. You guys wake up, and they're not back yet. Actually, I, I guess you'd only know that. So you go down for breakfast. They don't come down for a while. Assumingly, one of you goes up to knock or check, and there's no answer. The door's unlocked still. Just look in, and there's no one there. No one's been there. Oh, they got busted. You guys, I think. Hekil does wake up. He ditched us. Hekil does wake up and come downstairs with you, and he's like, "Oh, what happened? Who's this guy?" I'll let you sneeze first. Go for it. No, I'm on the edge of sneezing. So, uh, um, I'm, like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, uh, you're, uh, we're drunk on the side of the road. Perhaps you can tell that's, us. That's a normal day that ends in Y. Yeah. Well, I guess it ends something in Y, probably. That's any day of the week, I guess. Uh, well, thanks. Um, it looks like my clothes were washed, so you got me nude, so that means we had a good time, I guess. Yeah, you and the dog. Uh, well, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? So who, who are you? And, and you know, there was, there was some, some, well, first some guy all, around you, I think, looked like he stole a lot of money from you. Where did he get What'd you guys do to him? What's that? We chased him off. But you misread him, because I don't have any money. Okay. <laughs> so he couldn't have stolen anything. He looks like he stole a 25 gold bar. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you now. So he's just, remember, I described him as... <laughs> <laughs> Did you say that? He says, I don't, I think you were drunk yourself, friend, because there's no way I'd ever have that amount of money on me. Okay. Look, look at me, you know, I don't got, I tell you the first thing I do, and I want to thank you very much, because the first thing I would do if I had some money is I'd feed this little bugger right here. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, so I'm it gonna, looks like you guys fed him, and that's real nice of you. I'm gonna generously pay for breakfast for the dogs. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, let's go down there and have some breakfast and we'll talk. Yeah. So he's, he's just, he's a real wizened, uh, it looks, you know, he looks like he's in his late 60s. So he's, he's probably lost a good four or five inches on his height just from yeah. stooping. Uh, long, gray and black beard. He wears his hair under um, a tight... Gandalf? A tight... He wears his hair... No, but I was just about to say, he wears his hair under a tight, uh, not turban, but like a cloth head wrap that's pulled down almost like a... If it just makes sense, he wraps it and then pulls it down almost like a skull cap after it's wrapped and then it's tied in the back. 
it's a common look in, in Zyre. Okay. And it also keeps, if you don't wash very often, it keeps your hair under your hat, so it's not, you know, just after getting all gross. Can so, you, like, can you go over a shower? You're starting to smell. I say, yeah, you guys have look a over, you guys have, a, you guys have, well, you didn't say shower, probably said bath. There are showers in the hegemony, but they're extremely expensive. Like a bath. That sounds like great. Bath. Yeah, come on. Bugger, come on. And he calls his dog and they go Bugger. take a bath. Okay. And, uh, and then he, you guys go down for breakfast, and he comes. Butter, so you guys are down for breakfast. You guys are talking. You guys are talking and hanging out, and then he he comes down eventually with his dog, and uh, the dog is just happy as hell. Like like the dog, it's night and day from how dead it was yesterday. Basically, had some food and had some rest, and it's it's good. So the dog runs up right up to you, and just starts you know at your leg, just like trying to be friendly and okay. wagging his tail and looking yeah. and stuff. So well, it looks like he likes you. Yeah, I think he does. So that's great that you guys took me up tonight. I appreciate that. <laughs> I had a little cracked open a few ones with the boys, and uh, things got out of hand. I just say some after last night somebody's pregnant, whether it's me or the dog, or you know who knows. He's obviously just joking, but he's he like he, he's. I'm sorry, I didn't realize the lady was amongst us. Uh, uh, ladies were amongst us, so sorry about that. Um, when I say somebody got pregnant, there was no intercourse involved. That was just being facetious. And he's you hear him, and he's extremely well spoken for this yeah. guy who's. Says, so, so my apologies, but I hear there's sausages and I hear there's bread, so that's great. Um, I also hear you're paying for me. I never say no to that, I'm so gonna, thank you. Yeah, no, no worries. Perhaps and you can tell us about your, your background, your history. He takes a seat and he's just putting, just putting food away. And he'll talk to you with full mouth in between yeah. bites, and he says, and basically he'll tell you, I'm not going to tell you the whole thing in character because that voice hurts my throat. Uh, he's saying that he uh, he he came to his, uh, to Mesa about 25 years ago. Um, he was uh, uh, an enlisted soldier in the Holy Army. And he did uh, the first, in, what they called the first endeavor uh, for the Cork Archipelago. It's nice that you mentioned that earlier because it ties in well. The, when they went down and first tried to expand the Cork Archipelago, he was part of the first endeavor. Um, he, he shows you, he, he pulls up his pant leg, and it's horrific, but it's well healed well, over a long time ago. Up, but right? his, his left leg from the ankle to the knee, about half of the meat is just gone. Right? So it's a scar that goes almost all the way to the bone. It's like a hell of a hair out of the knee. And it looks like he can barely, uh, thanks for ruining where I'm going with this story, by the way, but it looks like he can barely, um, <clears throat> like you're like, man, how can you put me in weight on that? Because there's just a lot of muscle in this thing, right? Yeah. Um, but it's he, all- He it's, walks to the leg. Yeah, he does. And it's all scarred and healed over. And thank you, Dar, for ruining this. But he says, then I was down there and uh, took an arrow to the knee and it was, uh, you know, like the cork archipelago pirates like to do, it was poison. I think I cut out, but I ate a bunch of flesh away. Well, I don't deliver my money anymore. So, came here, um, joined up with a friend who was doing some carpentry in, in the city, and you know he unfortunately passed due to a wasting illness, and and I went along and uh, taught uh, military strategy at the uh, academy uh, for about a year, and I'll just be the first to say that I, uh, you know, have a problem with the drink. The drink. Lost that job and lost another job or two along the way. Next yeah. thing you know, you have a place to stay and you're just on the street. On the street. But you know, we make a good uh, we make a good show of it. Me and Bugger here. Uh, that was probably the worst place he's been in a while. He looks like he's been better already. Yeah, you know, he always he always eats before I do, so I don't think that I don't take advantage. You know, we've been we've been getting by. We've been doing some neat tasks and the green growers. And he looks at you, so he can clearly tell right off the bat that you're doing it just by your dress and your. The green growers have been really great. Uh, you can go in and clear out, um, you know, droppings uh, of animals in the, in the big pine forest and such. And um, I don't have the physical wherewithal to work on the uh, on the trees themselves to work on because lumber is a real good business. Of course, it is. So we get by, and it's whole time you're just, just putting away food. Yes, are you finishing that, my friend? Oh, uh, you don't want to eat that. Well, thank you. Great. Yes, and he goes, he goes, oh, you know, I'll tell you this right now, the rat folk, um, any rat folk I've ever met has been a great man or woman. So, just open your mind a little. They're, they're, they're nice people, and they're, honestly, they're more cleanly than some of us, myself included, unfortunately. And he, like, abashedly kind of grabs the beer bottle and goes eat more of it, so. Uh, that's, yeah, so, uh, I'll take that under his <laughs> advisement. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, I want to generously, okay, so that sounds good. So you have no idea, do you, does people just drop money in your... No, so I don't, so here's the thing. Um, I, I, I spent about that man who was, who was running, who was seeing yeah, it's, it's a strange story, I'll tell you right now, because 
I don't beg. Um, and, and, and everybody has their. How do I put this? I'm a little prideful still. Uh, I was a man who I considered accomplished at some point, you know. Mm -hmm. So I try not to beg. I uh, I do work where it is, and I, I do what I can. Um, some of the guys and, and, and ladies uh, and others who become transient sent to maze and other places, resorts, or whatever you need to do. They, okay. uh, prostitution, whatever you have to do. But luckily for me so far, all I've had to do is just do some hard jobs that no one else wants to do, right? So, so no, no one should have dropped money, and this is just a weird, I don't know what happened there. It sounds like know, maybe, maybe, maybe it was a, it, it's, it's a blessing from the gods as far as I'm concerned, because you mistakenly, I, I, if with respect, uh -huh. you know, thought someone was accosting me, you chased them off, and then I got the benefit, and so did Bugger, I, of some food and a nice hot place to sleep tonight. You're so most that was, so that was uh, I appreciate that. I think. And Go ahead and make a deception check. <laughs> <laughs> Which is deception. Which is deception. Uh, so now, not only not only we're playing fifth edition for the other game, but Pathfinder 2E here, and I've been uh, making a character for a Star Wars uh, Saga edition campaign that I'm going to play in as a player. So now I got three systems mixed up in my head. What'd you get? A seven. Okay. He just looks at you like. He says, "You know what? But I feel so bad for your circumstances, and because you fought in the war, here's a whole gold piece." It's amazing. He grabs it, and he's still just looking at you like. Something's wrong here. Something's you know? wrong. Like, and you know what? But you know what? This will this will feed me for a very very long time. I know, I know, I know. Best and I, under I have now. no way. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, of course. I, I have no way of repaying this. But I'll tell you what. If I see you around town anywhere and you ever need help, okay, you just let Heckle know, and me and Bugger will help out any way we can. Okay. Okay. And he quickly, just without even hesitation, gets up, bows to you all, says, "Ladies, ladies, uh, Mr. Rapport, thank you very much." And then he just leaves quickly. Okay. He's not offended at all. Yeah. He's been dismissed many times in his life, so he gets okay. up and just leaves. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you give him a gold piece, and you have a twenty-five gold wafer. <laughs> <laughs> That's yours. What the hell is that about? <laughs> and, and you guys were just quiet and like listening. You asked a question yeah, too, but yeah, we mostly just we absorbing. Asked, we, yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah. That's where I was okay. the only one that knows. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we so really she says, what the hell was that about? What? It would be generous. You're obviously... <laughs> <laughs> Almost lost my beer. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just a nice, generous individual. Okay. <laughs> uh, all, of, all three of you make... Uh, is there a sense motive? Is that, gonna is, be that, is that a thing? Perception. Yeah, it's perception. Wait, perception. Wait, is, why is perception even on here? Because it has its own it's section. Its own, oh, it's I forgot. Yeah, that's thing. correct. Yeah, it is, yeah. 24. 13, 24. Uh, this is good because you're not, you're not extremely worldly. No, so this is good. Nice. Yeah. And you're also you're worldly enough, but you're a very good, you're very capital G good. So like you don't you don't you expect the best in people often. Yeah. Not always, but often. Am I wrong? Right? That's fine. So that's why those thirteens won't cut it. But you know something's up. He's being pro he's being precarious. Uh, I'm not entirely the definition. Precarious, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, he's he's um dissembly. Dissembly, yes. Which which is what precarious is. Uh, sorry, I'm. No, it's okay. That's good. That's I good. That's I need right. to precarious my, my, my vocab. Anyway, go ahead. Anyways, uh, okay. Shall we go on? Are we leaving the city by some way, shape, or form? Ideas on how to do that? Well, I guess we should wait for these two to. The only problem is, I wonder if. Because these guys aren't there, right? Chipper back. Chipper. That's true. Prevaricarious. Wow, I missed a syllable in it. Prevaricarious is to prevaricate. Prevaricate. God damn it. And that's to speak or act in an evasive way. So, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. Prevaricarious. Okay. Prevaricate. Anyways, uh, I have to look up. Um, anyways, I'll be like, these guys aren't there, so I'm like, I'm like, I said, turn you guys, I said, yeah, I mean, it's we're, it's, we're it's eight thirty, it's eight thirty a.m., which is it's, late by these sort of standards, yeah, and they're not back. I said, they could have been caught. We should try to just, I think, at this point, try to get out of dodge. It's because if they're caught, and then your family, your, your guy, your family is probably going to be implicated soon too. And also, just pause to say how awesome this music is. The background music is good. Thank you, Music D20. Yeah. Great, um, great Patreon. 
So I'm like, I don't know, what do you guys say? I mean, I don't know. This, the fact that they're missing is really worse, right? She's like, no, it's, I don't want to Well, the reality is, I'm with you. We should have left last night. I don't understand why we... This is the middle of the night. Got to pay for a room. Got a homeless guy you want to milk for information? I mean, come on. <laughs> Dark. You know, what I'm, you, know what I'm about? you know what I'm thinking about, right? Yeah. Jeez. There's a, um... Nope. Yeah. There's a, there's someone who... I don't want to distract. I'll, yeah, I just won't do it. I just won't do it. We'll make it a little yeah. I'll do it to open the next session, okay. since it's good to open with a joke. Okay. Um, anyways. Yeah. Bill's going to drive cash and money and info. <laughs> so, not 25 enough. gold is a lot of money, Jeff. So you have that on your character sheet, yeah. and you, that's yours. You're very well off. And well, the only one who knows about it is Hesper, so. Well, you didn't just say you milked it for money. They have a, um... Did you say that? Yeah. I just yeah. milked oh. it for money and for really money. You just paid him a gold. How did you milk him for money? Well, just uh, that, that, that his money and information will turn into money. That's what I meant by that. <laughs> make, a new, yeah, make a new deception. <laughs> <rest perception. laughs> make a new deception. Rest perception. That's, that's a 22. That's a 14. <laughs> That's a 12. Okay, so you two, ironically, you're the one of the suspicious of but you two are suspicious of that suspicious. statement. Yeah. 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 You think he's full of shit. But okay. it didn't necessarily tell you what happened. It, you just think he's full of shit. But yeah. Again, it's probably none of my business. <laughs> Perception and deception are fun because the thing is, like, if you can tell someone's lying, you don't know what and why they're lying. About yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you wouldn't put together, there's a 25 gold wafer that he stole yeah. off the guy. You just know that something's up and he's fucking weird, is what you're really thinking. I'm a weird guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. What's we gonna do? Are we gonna, are we gonna... I mean, is there some way to find out if they've got Hesmore and Rostow? I don't really want to leave do them you, behind. Do you want to go to the police station? No. Can we get oh. that homeless guy to go to the police station? <laughs> uh, no, but we also can send an alchemical familiar flying over to the police station and take a look around. That's true. It's absolutely true. And then, yeah. Does your Leshy do anything? She... I keep wondering if you're actually going to get too high one day and actually smoke your lunch. <laughs> First off, Oops. I boil her into tea. Um, she... Oops, she could go. Yeah, no, she could go. No, Cardi. Sorry. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, but uh, there's that possibility too. Right. I thought I could just have the, the thing fly and kind of follow and, and like mm -hmm. see if they're around or not. But my worry How is that... How does it communicate with you? Ask for that. Back. Yeah. So I can give it two abilities. I can spend an hour and can give it two abilities, one to fly, one to So where are you guys yeah, going to? Yeah, I did not give her a speed last night, so she, it's just empty. So you can tell, you can tell when she actually. feels like danger or something like that. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. And I was actually about to question your gendering of her, but actually plants absolutely have genders on them. Or sexes. Not, sexes. Not, they usually, not, uh, usually mushrooms. Oh, so you just call her her because you want to call her her? I mean, you can call her whatever you want, but yeah. Okay. It's an image, but I call her her. Her, yeah. So, and that's great. So you guys are going to the local police station? No, no, I'm going to send that alchemical familiar to the recon. And you know what? They're, like I've described, in Tamesa, like in any other notable city of any import in, um, in the hegemony, there are, in a hundred, in a, in a hundred block range, ten block range, a good thirty to forty flying uh, drones, essentially, uh, mechanicals, delivering uh, medicine, uh, letters, essentially, essentially, yeah, 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 absolutely, right? Yeah, this stream is sponsored by... Because one of the basic things you can give to a familiar is fly, and so that's what they're, they just fly around, and there's stuff happening at all, at all times. They fly at a much lower altitude than balloon boats who come in, etc. Okay. And ornithopters that carry people, we didn't go that, it, that has not been invented. Uh, it's in, it's in experimental stages. Right. You might actually know about some, but, but some so, treatises that have been published, uh, not treatises. About ornithopters? Yeah, about, about person bearing ornithopters, but it's highly experimental. So, for now, the large usually, ornithopters. Usually, something like that would actually happen after military use. Yeah, exactly. So, when you hear about it being experimental, you can probably, your guy being intelligent, can probably assume and the military already has it, okay. quite possibly. Without proof, you don't know for sure, but yeah. So people bearing ornithopters, no, not yet. But large ornithopters that are about the size of a person that are carrying larger packages. Also, sure. if, it, if it bears a person, it's no longer an ornithopter. 
Yeah, you're, well, I thought an ornithopter just meant that it travels. It's an unmanned. It has to be unmanned. It has to be unmanned. No. I, I thought ornithopter, ornithopter, ornithopter is just flapping. It's a flapping wing. Yeah. Well, we'll talk that's about it more. That is unmanned. That's very specific to ornithopter. Okay. I thought it was just okay. Great. Uh, I, I think it's just that the, the type of, well, about the type of aerial movement it does. Anyways. Good stuff. Yeah, Not important enough to worry about. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, anyways, so. in the book Dune, they call ornithopters and they carry people. Yeah, and so it's a, maybe Da Vinci's original description of them clearly had to be on man. Maybe, you know, maybe that's it. Because um, he's the person who invented the term. Maybe. Also, it doesn't matter. So, also, it doesn't matter. So, you, so, that, so that him flying around doesn't see anything out of the ordinary. Okay. So How long are you going to make him go? Hit go. Fly around. Like, what do you guys want to do? Fly now, I want to talk about one thing really quickly. Sorry. I assume go in and uh, do a quick investigation. This you, is in the yeah. police station. Well, I can be. I can you, inquire do, do about. Do we know you're being hunted? Do we I can that? inquire. Oh, yeah. I can inquire about uh, the attack that happened to us. So there's a legitimate reason why we would go in. But do we know? Do we know your? Do we know about you yet? Do we? I'm sorry. Maybe I don't. You're asking in character. I'm asking out of actually out of character. Do we know that in character your character? Okay, how about this? In character, every character huh? knows that she is on the run for something. Just like you're all, all on, the, on the run for something. Um, you've seen her use magic, but she manifests a halo when she does it. Okay. So it could very well be clerical of some nature and divine of some nature. And she insists it is. The only person who made a check to know that she's full okay. of shit in some aspect is Hesworth. So as far as you're concerned, that, oh, he also knows the halo. Is not normal. Okay. Okay. Too. Okay. You know. Um, so as far as you yeah. know, she is a she is a cleric of the house of La Dawn and Dusk, Lighthouse okay. of Dawn and Dusk. And then I'm like, Dusk. okay, you want to go in, and I'll have my kind of familiar. We can hang back like a block, and I'm familiarly watching, and see what happens with you. Are you a good talker? Oh, you're a good talker. Oh, okay. <laughs> you might show some skin. Maybe get some that way. That way. Okay. Maybe that'll work. I don't know. What do you guys think? Before that person, <laughs> you definitely shouldn't send this guy. I mean, if she's she's she handsome on her age. age. She's, she's very, yeah, she's very pretty. Yeah. You like, but, but I'm not like saying she's like a so. Kate Beckinsale level pretty, pretty, but she's pretty. pretty. And I like that response. If I may, if I may, I uh, uh, if I may, uh, if I may color your response a little. You said you could show some skin, and your character would say that. Yeah. She said, "I'm not a whore," but importantly, she wasn't speaking derisively because prostitutes in most of these nations are regulated by the Lighthouse Blitz, actually. And are perfectly reasonable employment opportunities, but she's just saying, I'm not one of those, so yeah. I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Right, yeah. you know what I mean? You might be disdainful in Fewes. She's a little yeah. disdainful. Lighthouse Bliss is way up in Il Sejueta primarily, and Fewes, you're one of the you're one of the rare Lighthouse Bliss followers there, so you, maybe you were disdainful. Because in Fewes, uh, prostitution is not nearly as, uh, it's frowned upon more than much higher in Il Sejueta. I'm playing her a little more conservative. I'm good with that, yeah, that's fine. That's no problem. Yeah. Well, alternative is we have someone who's a talker. Uh, yeah, you could say yeah. that I have okay. the ability to go, go, go do your uh, talking. Now, before you decide to do that, I wanted to tell you that um, the Ghost Head Inn is in Cedar Town. The uh, police station? Well, there are various police stations, is the problem. The but I will tell you this. The closest one to me to the park? I'll tell you. What do you do? Jenny, you take really good notes. Do you remember before I look it up where the, where the grave uh, site was? Grave, let's see. Down City Braves, that's all I've got. That's okay. I can look up Down City, that actually will help me. Down City. Culture of Zai statue. Come on. Oak oh, okay. Town. <laughs> this song, more than the other songs that D20 Music puts out, it sounds a little more witcher than others, huh? Almost, right? He, put out, he puts out some pretty good stuff that has Mesoamerican and Mesopotamian Middle Eastern um, tones to them, which is why I specifically looked up this Patreon, because that's the kind of the underlying <clears throat> operation here. So, I'm so sorry, I need to find the city, the um, districts again real quick here. Okay, okay, okay. Oak Town is where the Down City Graves are. That's a poor, mostly residential area. Cedar Town is where the Ghost Head Inn is. It's also where Her Jesus Houses is, your younger daughter, because Barazdad University is also here, and that's where she attends. That's all in the same area as Cedar Town, okay? Uh, El Tenny, your son's house is in Olive Town, which is a middling, mostly agricultural and commercial area. So there are police stations in every district. In fact, there are multiple in every district. I'm sure. It's safe to assume 
that he would have been brought, at least at first, until they processed him and figured out whatever they were going to figure out, to Oaktown, the, the, the district in Oaktown. Oaktown is not super close to where you're staying at the Goat's Head Inn in Cedartown, but an hour and a half walk. Are you sure this is the... Like, what if you ratted us out? Yeah. I don't know it's you. She does have a good point. Furthermore, the, our friends were caught. I don't know where they... Yes. I think we need to leave. For once, the rat speaks some truth. Uh, he's, he's got a good head about him. He does. He's silent. I think we need to. Oh. An average well, Could we leave a note with Big Bantu? So they can catch up with us? I don't know where we're going or how. Yeah. Everything's literally up in the air now because you, your fool was the way out. It was the way out. But, you know. But There are other ways I would say. I'm not, I'm not going to. So as a GM, I'm not going to force you into any specific. Thing. I know, I know. This is going to be good because I'm literally I getting out of the city. Well, I, I don't get. I don't. We will. Get, I don't care what you say. Okay. It's easy. Okay. Oh, it's easy. The city's a big circle. This is a very big city too. So yeah, you so, take a direction and you walk out. But I mean, you have to have a place to go. Where are you going to go? You're not objectively wrong. You're not. I mean, what if you follow I mean, the train tracks? And how would we survive runs. outside the city? Far. Another step. Yeah. So, so what, what did you say about train tracks? I said, what if we Sorry. follow the train tracks and jump the train that goes a day and a half now? Yeah, down? day and a half away. Well, yeah. we could find somewhere that it's going to slow down. Maybe switch tracks. I don't know. You guys, like, make, you guys can make checks if you'd like. And, and maybe push something on the track so it has to stop and we just jump off. That's it's like a log. Genius. Yeah, no, that would They're stop the right? Right? Uh, no one's they, played Red Dead Redemption forever. The, <laughs> the trains are powered off of gas reaction, so they're not exactly steam engines. They're not exactly coal engines. It's a, it's a. You sound very climate changing. <laughs> oh no no, it's, they definitely don't give a shit about their climate. No, it's it's a chemical reaction. Is all I'm gonna really say because it's some fantasy. Okay. Thing, but it's a chemical reaction based. Thing. Yeah. Okay. Did, but yes, it's, it's chemicals. Fuel. Yeah, you're correct. Yes, absolutely. In fact, it's not even as efficient as steam. Okay. Uh, so they have to refuel often. Perhaps we can Just like Carson, is, is there um, a, uh, if we can get like someone who's arrested? Depot. So I was going to say, if someone's arrested, are they represented by someone? Yeah, a magistrate will represent someone, um, sorry, an advocate will represent advocate. someone against a magistrate. Could, could you go in kind of disguised as an advocate? I don't know, is that Maybe. Yeah. Like, change your hair or something? I don't know. Cut it? Do something different? Or right. I know what. Wear glasses. All right. They'll never get. They'll <laughs> never. So we're about to we're about to take a break, but let's go ahead and set up what we're gonna do. So are all of you gonna head out together towards the police station, or just her, or? I think we're leaving. Are you going, going in there? I definitely agree. I should wear a disguise. Okay. Yep. Great. If I, I go, my alchemical familiar will kind of be in the like hovering and watching. Yeah. And above I, you guys and then maybe eye. we'll wait a little bit of wait somewhere like that's a really cool thing to have him just have it be just like an eye in the sky as you go around that's yeah. pretty cool reminds me of the opening scene of uh civil war because they're using the fal falcon using a little bit yeah, right? yeah so you guys uh so i just want to speed up a little so we can get to our break yeah, so yeah. you guys are going to head over you're going to disguise first so go ahead and let's make that check actually you know what we'll make the check when you talk to someone okay, okay. so you're going to disguise yourself as what just an app just an advocate here's here's the thing advocates have different bracelets than others so you can but you can disguise your bracelet as part of a disguise check whether that be coding it with something you know it's yeah. like you can fake anything you know with a good disguise check but that's not you can even say that you're a messenger for the advocate or something like that so anything like that hey, yeah. that i'm supposed to you know do you have this person here in your jail and you know that you could be a representative of an advocate not really a lawyer but yeah. someone who's representative of a lawyer and, like a lawyer. and you wouldn't have any special bracelet for that so there's that so all right, now your bracelet says specifically that you're a cleric of Lighthouse Dawn and Dusk. Now, are there clerics of Lighthouse Dawn and Dusk that might also be an assistant to an advocate? It's not impossible. So instead of that person. But she's the one who likes to talk. He's good at talking to people. Okay. Although he probably is. Okay, but let's get to it. What do you want to do? What do you guys or, want to do? Or you could just be your own cleric and say, hey, the cleric, the, the, the church is very interested in this person. They'll be here. Just bullshit them up. It would be the Lighthouse. The just lighthouse. to be clear, the way the political system works within the church, too. Yeah. Is she would be representative of her lighthouse, but couldn't speak for the church itself. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wing it, Will. You just wing it. Actually, that's not a bad idea. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna head. You guys are all gonna head out together, uh -huh. and I'm gonna tell you this. 
as you guys head out towards Oaktown. Just real quick. As you travel along through the city, you notice two male priests walking side by side, holding hands. The younger one wears the purple and navy thalb. Remember I described you guys what a thalb was? T-H-A-W-B. It's a classical um, Middle Eastern robe of sorts. A thalb of lighthouse deep and has cropped hair shaved on the left side. The other slightly older man wears the tan silver lined robes of the one church. It's funny you just mentioned about that thing with her because I have this written out and this is something you get to see. And has his hair pulled back into multiple braids that are tied together. So lots of little braids that are tied together in one big braid. Um, you can identify yourself as a lighthouse priest. You work within the lighthouse. And there are those who work for the one church directly who are out of uh, Hayashi, which is essentially the, the Vatican. Uh, they're speaking amicably until one of them is hit with a small pellet, looks like from a goat, a goat pellet. On the shoulder, turns and frowns a group of youths, youths that are ranging, you know, nine to 13 years old, six, six kids up there. Uh, they throw another pellet at the man and one whispers something angrily to the other. And the second shakes his head, the second priest, sorry, these are the priests, one shakes his head and they continue along. Children follow, however, that you're just walking along and you see that this is happening. Follow, however, throwing more feces at them. They do this for another 50 feet or so, with the two men hurrying along and trying to ignore them. Wait, have we ever seen anything like that before? Like that, is that Disrespect a directly toward the lighthouse, the lighthouse or the one church, you, none of you have personally seen this. Now note that the gods disappeared about 80 years ago, and relations between cl clergy and non-clergy folk have waxed and waned through that time. Is it just kids being... Yeah. Kids being kids, but they're they're but they're, they're so battering like someone with food. Leader. Uh, yeah, the oldest kid amongst them is 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 direct. He goes, he goes. Yeah, that was one of the kid goes to scoop up uh, uh, quagga, quagga from feces, which is a big nice spot. Scoops them up. They're wearing gloves. And he just goes and throw it. But the other guys cast like, yeah. tanglefoot on the kid that's throwing the shit. Okay, so what does that do? Great. Um, so. A vine covered in sticky sap appears, and from thin air, uh, he has to attempt to, or I have to attempt to spell attack. On a critical success, he's immobilized. Okay. With a minus 10 foot circumstance penalty to its speeds for one round. Success is just takes the 10 foot penalty, failure is unaffected. Okay. 17? Uh, 17 on the die will do it, so that's a critical success. <laughs> The okay. 25? Oh yeah. Yeah, so he's just kind of wrapped so around. So lines come out of the ground, just wrap around him, and he's immobilized, right? He's just immobilized. Can't and one of goes like, what? What? And the priest kind of look over and see And him. I look over and I kind of shake my finger at him like, you shouldn't be doing that. And you didn't try to disguise your spell casting at all either. I'm a druid. Okay. So they, so they, so the kids are like, what? And one of the guys just goes, he's like, what the hell, lady? And he just goes to try to pull the lines off of the guy. And they, and you don't do anything else, I assume. No, so they eventually do. Them. It's just... and, they, and they all run away. They all yeah. run off. And, uh, Okay, so that's that. Do the um, priests see that? Yeah, yeah. One of them, they they walk over towards you, and uh, they walk they walk over to you. Two of them. And I remember one was one was notably older. Um, he wears the tan silver lined ro robes of the uh, one church in New York. He says, "Thank you very much. Um, it's not our tact. We like to kill with kindness, but at the same time, you didn't hurt anyone, so." Maybe they won't do that next time. I just hate to see the church be disrespected like that. Well, the younger one, the younger one says, "Yeah, you know, things weren't this way before the gods left, and <clears throat> now soldiers won't get involved for fear of encouraging violence. So we're kind of left to our own. And um, we're healers, us two. So thank you very much. My name is My name is the older one. Says my name is Zamet, and he says, "May the light shine upon you." And he puts his hand up to shake me. The younger one says, "His name is Filthy." He says, thank you very much. If you uh, if you need anything, um, please let us know. Um, we stay over at the at the Wild Onions in Bernal. We're passing through. And uh, where, where are you headed? The older one says, well, the older one looks at you. Oh, when you say that, he, the older one looks at you and says, well, you know, where we will, right? And the younger one puts his hand on his shoulder and says, we're headed towards Hadassia. We're going to get our marriage. Blessed by the church there. Congratulations, that's fantastic. Thank you. And the older one's kind of like looks at him and kind of rolls his eyes because he like he's like, come on, Delphi, we don't know these people. It was very nice of her, 
but let's let's move along. And he says, all right, well, <clears throat> you know old men. In the land shine upon you. And you as well. And they walk off. So he's saying the wild onions in. He said that. And from there, let's go ahead and you guys get to the police station. And we'll just stop for now because we need to take a break. Yeah. And we'll, we'll be back in about 25 minutes and we'll do uh, the next session. Good job, guys. Cool.